All right, guys. Well, it's time to react to another Nostalgia Critic video. And a while back, he reviewed the animated version of The Little Mermaid. And yeah, because this came out right before the live-action version came out. And, you know, I should have had a feeling that he was most likely going to do a review on The Little Mermaid, because, I don't know, sometimes, like, you never know what the Nostalgia Critic is going to review. And it's like, you know, when a certain movie is about to come out, you're wondering, hmm, is he going to review something, you know, in celebration? You get my point. So, yeah. All right. And, um... And, you know, all the other Disney films that he's reviewed, like, you know, The Lion King, uh, the first Pixar film he reviewed, Brave, and uh, a couple of others, but yeah. All right, but no time to waste, because, uh, yeah, this is a long review, and I've got a snack with me, um, as I sometimes do. So, enough said. Let's get to the video right now. I don't think, you know, the music to this never gets old. I remember now, because What's-Her-Face, like, representing Merida as an Oscar. I remember that. And they have a special guest star for the, the Little Mermaid review. Uh, we have a special guest today. That's what I said. Oh. He, he tried to eat us, remember? That's oddly not specific. It doesn't matter. We're not gonna let you die on us. I've seen that, but I, for, I, I forgot his appearance. What does a house Philo Barnhart do? Suck our blood? Burn it from our bones? No, I draw pictures of puppies. Puppies, 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 puppies. I want a drawing of a puppy. We shall all have drawings of puppies. Wait, it's a trick. Remember, he hissed at us earlier. Well, that's how Philo say hello. You say bye-bye on my face? There are weirder traditions. Puppy? Didn't he help design Ariel? <sighs> All right, I'll allow it because for viewing we can be here. Oh, he did. I see teeth marks anywhere. Does that include the wall? Obviously, he had some involvement <laughs> in the Little Mermaid. Okay, fine, fine. He can stay. You better have stories, and you better have room for more drawings of puppies. I do. I always have room for that. Back to the lame. Here we go. Is it almost been 35 years since the release of the original and the live action remake having us all say, okay, come on, give it a chance, but it's probably going to be dookie. It only makes mm. sense to talk about the film that starred the Disney. A little bit. Sense. The Little Mermaid came out when Disney was in a real rough spot, with films taking increasingly longer to make and getting very little box office return. Yeah. With new management taking over, it was said that Disney would have a new anime film of high quality every year. Well, again, I feel like The Great Mouse Detective was at a peak. Was at its peak, the Renaissance. True, very true. We all have nostalgia, but does it objectively work on its own, even if you didn't grow up with it? Well, we're going to take a closer look. Like in the past is one of the film's animators, Philo Barnhart. Aha! I knew it. I knew you were trying to eat us. Thanks for giving us my back there when I thought I should go. You just walk around. What was he gonna do with it? This is the Little Mermaid. And what's in face? He's gonna talk about some fun facts. Early CGI off the port bow. And it weirdly doesn't look that bad. No. Everyone thinks Beauty and the Beast was the first 2D movie to use CG. Mm -mm. They did use it a couple times in the past. The difference is Black Cauldron was the first. Correctly, so they always kept it half hidden just in case. Even oh, yeah. Even had a backup plan to have the ballroom hidden with just a spotlight on them in case it didn't render. Weird. Isn't this great? The salty sea air, the wind blowing in your face. Oh, oh it's a beautiful day to Aladdin. Hey, why aren't you all Aladdining? That's better. <laughs> This is Prince Eric, voiced by Christopher Daniel Barnes. Yeah. Yeah, great Brady plays royalty. 
some of the other character background characters in a cartoony look. He had to bring that up. The fish breathe in the water. You're forgetting young Frankenstein? He's that guy with the eye patch. Oh my gosh, and there's an ad already. I didn't think of that. I did not know that. I think I've seen her in some movies, I don't know. Also from uh, Christina Applegate. She used to uh, have oh. her hair styled out. It was like this little shelf. They initially wanted a blonde, but the rest of us said, no, let's do a redhead. We've never had a, a redhead star before. Plus, it was going to look great with the uh, underwater colors. Yeah, and the color of her Ariel is tail. Jody Benson. Model that girl was a Milano. But I'll be honest, I mostly see Sherry Stoner. Yes. So much of what I remember about the character comes from her expressiveness and comedic reactions, which added a new dimension to her compared to past Disney women who were seen as more passive. Even former Disney animators said they were amazed how expressive the character was, as when they animated women, they were encouraged to keep them more composed and proper. Sherry did uh, uh, an amazing job. We are inventive as Sherry actors, being the voice of Slappy Squirrel. I want to see a full version of this, you know, the reference footage. <laughs> yes, there you go. You remind me of a bad accident at Benny Perfect. Can you believe I'm doing this to scale? What a yut. How you doing, kid? I check in with a seagull named Scuttle. I hear Buddy Heck is very good in this. He tries to explain. It's a ping. Slappy Squirrels said Buddy Hackett's name. Buddy Hackett. <laughs> I've seen that. Buddy Hackett was in The Love Bug. You know, Herbie Love Bug. Talks to her father, who is normally angry, and 
Possibly she missed the concert, but also that she went to the circus. Flounder gave it away. By some fish eaters hook. I'm 16 years old. I don't need Aunt Pox anymore. That was what? It was a long time ago. <laughs> Introducing my plan. And an ad. Get it for $25 when you bring your phone. It's your Verizon. Is it? I'm not going to really talk that much whenever there's an ad, and, you know, as I've sometimes done before in these reactions to the Nostalgia Critic videos. Okay. He forbids her from going to the human world and tells Sebastian to keep an eye on her. Sebastian follows her to the bath of the low where he discovers she's a cuddly lectomaniac, an absolute hoarder for human things. Pretty much. <laughs> yes, technically a hoarder is too. Yeah, I don't know why I phrased it that way. Wouldn't you think of a girl, a girl who a Beloved song. Probably goes without saying, but this entire song sequence is basic perfection. Really, when people think of great moments in Disney animation, this is really near the top of the list. Yes. Jody was having trouble getting into the mood for a part of the world. If anyone's ever tried to sing it out there, you know what I mean. It's just a hard song to tackle. But she wanted to feel like she was Ariel in a dark cavern, so they lowered the lights in the studio. I want to be where the people are. Glenn handled that whole sequence on his own, which was his baby from the ground up. Storyboarded it, rough animated it, had it cleaned up with his own crew. He actually did all the carpet and all the syndrome with his drawing hand. I'm pretty sure Glenn lost more hair on that. <laughs> and he convinced Katzenberg. <laughs> almost didn't make it into the film. He convinced Katzenberg. Katzenberg had attended a preview audience, saw some kids fidgeting during the song, and it was still mostly in storyboard form at that point. So he got nervous and said, it's out. Big battle began between Glenn Keane, Howard Ashman, and Jeffrey Katzenberg, and it stayed in. It's a tenet of and Howard Ashman said something, you know, over my dead body or removing this, kind of whatever he said. Burning, and that was Ariel's was part of that. But for some reason on Blu-ray, they switched and these Glenn, two Glenn Keane convincing Howard Ashman worked. I did not know that. Why do they do that? Did I notice that in the Disney Plus? I don't know. Oh god. <laughs> His body's just like I don't know in the drawing. And goes a little sit made on <laughs> Oh, yeah, okay. I never thought of that. Or I did not notice that. Ariel was moving to do the wrong cheek. <laughs> Trump statue. This is one of those sequences where the shots go by really fast, but if you pause certain moments, you really get some amazing compositions. Oh, yeah. Going back to use some techniques that were tried and true. Multiplane shots for uh, waves. Each one of those clusters of waves, they develop patterns, just like we have to develop formulas for drawing the characters. Pieces coming off of other pieces of water. This was the last film that was painted by hand. Um, hmm. The very next one was, was uh, uh, digitally uh, colored. One or two airbrush cells that flash for the main animation. Sometimes it's even a white grease pencil right on the celluloid. Hmm. Ariel saves the prince and brings him to shore. Is he dead? Oh, I, I can't make out a heartbeat. Yeah, who brought Dr. Tarantino here? Prince uh, who? Though, and here's Ariel singing just before he can get a good look. I don't think I'd get that reference. Rescued my engine, and she had the most beautiful voice. And she smelled like brown trout? <laughs> Ariel obsesses Brown trout? Her, and I do mean obsesses, thinking she's discovered the love of her life. Science never lies. Well, I mean, even Eric, you know. I'll shade him to my bed, borrow that sledgehammer so I can change his feet into proper fins. Yeah, so it's a perfect good time to bring up what many people consider either the best part of the movie or the worst part of the movie, The Little Mermaid herself. I'll be honest, Ariel. I really like the original Hans Christian Andersen story. Like Romeo and Juliet, you can kind of see it in two ways. 
You can see it as true love at first sight that ends in tragedy, or impulse attraction that's not allowed to play out, resulting in sacrifice. You could argue this film completely goes against the original idea of the story. But what it's transformed into is still pretty good. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, Disney has always brightened up these stories because of how actually they're pretty damn dark. <laughs> Pinocchio is one of the darkest. He's not wrong. All of a sudden, and I went into it. John Musker and I said, "What are you gonna do for the end?" I just realized he says, "Oh, don't worry, she lives. It's a Disney film." Yeah, you know that, right? <laughs> the original book, she <laughs> dies. About, you know, giving you a relief every so often and making it hopeful. What makes this mm -hmm. one interesting, though, is that it's I think even Pinocchio, like Snow White, Pinocchio hung himself. I, Snow White is I think so. An emotional storytelling. Who is this guy? What is his name? Why do they just have an understanding? She has to go with him now. There's no sense at all that it's a fairy tale where logic takes a back seat and gives your emotions what they want to see. Mm -hmm. It's closer to how a dream works rather than reality. And that is a very respectable form of art and storytelling. Mm -hmm. Frozen has a lot more logic to it. You can't marry someone you just met, and comedy ensues. Both work well because that's the environment they created. The dialogue from either of these movies wouldn't fit in the other. You couldn't hear Snow White saying, Food size doesn't matter. You also couldn't hear Elsa saying, Let's scoop up the water and rub it on your face and go... And that being the dwarves. Little Mermaid clearly <laughs> wants the simplicity and emotions of Snow White, but they evolved the character closer to something like Frozen. Ultimately, we wanted to make a, a traditional, you know, animated musical fairy tale. We championed it a bit to do that. We did take a little of the past and put it in her character. A lot of people yell at Ariel for being too man-obsessed, but at the time, she was seen as a pioneer because she was actually going after what she wanted. The character is active. She's not just a little girl that things happen to. She's up there. She's going to go to the surface. She's going to find her prince. She's going to take care of business. And so you can really identify with it. Bottom line, mm. they did their job too well in making her feel more real. So instead of coming across as a wide-eyed innocent in a dreamlike world where instant romance is welcomed, she comes across a by the way, this was The Little Mermaid was the first fairy tale film for Disney since Sleeping Beauty. I'm going to find that girl that I'm going to marry because she held my hand and that means we get married, right? We get married. And sung. Thankfully, though, everything else about her is and she saved him. and likable. She doesn't have much of an art, but I realize she's helping other people achieve their hearts and not seeing the surface world a few flaws the character has, which you could connect to just the fairy tale landscape of the time. There's way too many things about her that reflect the excitement of following our passions, despite the world telling us not to. Mm -hmm. The supporting cast plays a big part in that, too. As Sebastian sings the song that everybody loves, and yes, I acknowledge it's good, but I always just saw it's the song before Poor Unfortunate Souls. <laughs> Sorry, the villain songs are still the best in any ways. Yeah. The Great Nick Fury. Marvel Studios Secret Invasion. Now streaming. Villain songs are the are the best ones. Okay. And that was an ad for Secret Invasion. Our producer Maureen Donley found a wonderful dance troupe in Los Angeles, the Lula Washington Dance Theater. Very hmm. improvisational, just like uh, the, the people we had acting out on the video for us. Where a lot of the moves of those characters came from, especially that turtle that was like <laughs> and the chorus lines the creation. Yeah. Ah! Can I watch my twenty three Disney and eighty nine Disney in the room just to see what they talk about? <laughs> mm. Tell him I'll be back after happy hour. Again with that. He knows. 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 He Oh gosh. I reacted to the How It Should Have Ended video. You don't either. Try to destroy well, you know. Some really cool lighting effects, which completely tears Ariel apart. But the hizzy video I'm talking about, the shark from Jaws brought it in. Anyway, dinner's at five. Now to talk to your other sister about her report card. <laughs> hey, <minus. laughs> These two seem trustworthy. Yeah, not. Movie. We're gonna put it as the cover of the Nintendo uh, game. 
Is he no, gonna? No, they did that very randomly. Oh. Is he gonna do a Gozer joke? Because it's the same voice. I know the effects department was happy because we hmm. were trying to figure out a way to show underwater current. Short of animating hundreds more bubbles, we would have decided to have the hair long enough so that it would wave in the current. <laughs> you see that hmm. They say Ursula can help, so she agrees to follow them to her. No, oh, she's a demon. She's a monster. Why don't you go tell my father? You're good at that. In hindsight, yes, he probably should have done that. Again, all looks very inviting. This thing looks like it's Would have changed some things in the movie. Oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. A real human, but she has to give up her voice and has only three days to win him over, or she'll belong to her. Life's a full of tough choices, isn't it? I've talked about Pat Carroll's amazing work in Extraction Studios, so I won't repeat myself. But that's it. Oh. I think most people can agree this is her at her most iconic. Oh, absolutely it is. <laughs> and by God, like I said, this song's still so freaking cool. Not yes. Not music amazing, but every other pose I could see on a heavy metal poster. This whole sequence kicks so much ass. Right next to you know, Be Prepared, Hellfire, Friends on the Other Side. As a character, uh, we did have a man play the part for us, and sadly he was left off the credits. Max Kirby, uh. since he had been at the very early stages of production, they forgot all about him. He uh, was... I think I saw a little bit of footage of him. Like Sherry, he was very good at improvisation. He inspired, on the whole, I've been a saint. Or I'm confident for the whole. Because that was what we were doing. We were shooting him, you know, primarily doing the song. I also love how creatively they show her voice being used. It's a very abstract idea when you really think about it, but it's been a pretty inventive way to show. She turns a human, Ariel drowns, and the movie's over. No. I saw that thumbnail, like, for the bloopers. Okay. Oh, no ad. Thank you. Yeah, good point. What is it? You can't speak? Probably died in an accident or something. Oh, shame their handwriting isn't the same, so she could write it down. Did she sign her name in English? How it should have ended did that too. They did that. The problem with that hair too, uh, once she was out of the water, because people forgot, it does dry and settle. <laughs> it hangs limp. So a lot of people forgot that and they still kept the shape. <laughs> Testament to the animators that even without her voice, eh, it doesn't matter. Still a hugely expressive character. Hell, maybe even more so without it. These reactions when she combs her hair with a fork in almost no movie. And the timing, editing, and little that they do animate make it one of the funniest moments in any Disney film. Absolutely. I'm not even kidding. As a kid, I rewound this scene so many times, it started to scratch the tape. Which is weird. All my friends had this scene scratched up for some reason. <laughs> Oh, kids. Oh, this would definitely get a PG now. Not because it's violent, but just because it, you know, exists. Uh. I will create your chronometers. I don't know. Sometimes PG doesn't make any sense. I don't know what's funnier, this bit of slapstick, or suddenly noticing Prince Philip and Princess Aurora as Chef Boyardee dealers. What the hell is that? <laughs> Well, that's an Easter egg, right? But I never noticed that. Thanks, Doug. We decided to set up a training session between Renty, Bill Berg, and myself. We each had an hour to train people on how we put the character together. A lot of people swallowed hard because they don't like... But Chef Louie, humans, being voiced by Odo from DS9. Behave, they were terrified of failing, so we tried to get them over that hurdle by having that session. Of all shades... Imaginary masks that eventually you remove so that the character's head can be tilted around, mm. turn side to side, and you can actually build the eyes on there, build their eyebrows over the mask. Oh, 
<laughs> Another classic song was Sebastian trying to convince Eric to kiss her. To die in, to try you on a kiss again. Did you hear something? Despite this couple not having a ton of time together, the time they do have does create some good chemistry. They work well together. No, you don't. <laughs> okay, no. Rachel. Mm. Uh, her name is Ariel. <laughs> With the Jamaican accent. Yeah. Oh God! I suddenly think the sequels are good now. <laughs> sister, of course, Ursula had that. They're not sister that bad, bad, in my opinion. Saying she was the one who saved him, thus breaking. Ariel's not the best, but still. I say it, as a kid, I thought evil Ariel was a little hotter. Seriously, I can see why this minister got a hard on. No, that's not in this version. Oh, I see. We can build a castle out of him, but this is going too far. <sighs> Yes, exactly. The problem I had is they didn't spend enough time showing that he's very diminutive. He's even tinier than Ariel. Like he's actually standing on a platform. His vestments go past his knees, so it looked to some people like he was being aroused, I guess. But I, I know for But the fact, angle, I like... Never have done that. The balance on the ball. That, that was really it. <laughs> Oh, Doug. But that was a, that is a very emotional scene right there, you know? I mean, even though Ariel doesn't know, it's Ursula um, in disguise as Vanessa. So, of course, thanks to Scuttle. As I just said. Uh, and what happened at the beginning of the film? Those details, just, you know. Well, the Maleficent Dragon, for one thing. Mm-hmm. No, just a wreck ship. And a very gruesome death for Ursula. Right next to Clayton, Facilier. What was with the face? I get... all the people on the ship go? Well, maybe they were like, look, we showed up for half a wedding for half an area. We're only staying for half on this trip. Again, details, like, details like those, like. Would you care to join us in eating your slaughtered brother? <laughs> I'm sure they probably changed their ways after that. Yes, it does. I personally like other 
Disney animated films better, but man, did this get the ball rolling for a lot of future masterpieces we could make? Absolutely, it, it did. The bar for what was expected from Disney and animated films in general. The two films it has are more than overshadowed by DreamWorks' talent. The characters, the visuals, the music, this really was a game changer after a long slog of underwhelming material from the masters of animation. I agree. We had more time to make Secret of Nim than we got on Mermaid. Most people had to get it done in 18 months, which is a year and a half, and that was unheard of. Disney had always given his artists three and four years to make a movie. That's really what it took. They didn't have the tools that we have now. Videotape machines mm -hmm. to tape our own video tests, the advent of the computer tools that we use. That made it a little easier, but they had to hire an awful lot more people. We were spending morning, noon, and night in there. <laughs> they were feeding us meals to keep us there. And the overtime was great. This put Disney back on the map and got everyone rethinking how to tell an animated fairy tale. Yep. And I've even more since then, and hopefully will continue to evolve. And not deviate. Is it the uh. original story? No. Is it the most complex of the Disney movies? No. But there is an admirable simplicity that's clearly trying to grow. It is a Disney gem. We also knew right? that if we didn't meet this mandate of the studios, that they would shut down the department. That was the foundation of the studio to begin with. That yep. was worth preserving, so we worked extra hard. We also knew that it was probably going to be a hit because it was bringing back the traditional type of movie they always were successful at. Yes. And, and instead, uh, it, it opened the pathway for all the other great movies that came out after. What else can you say? But there's a reason both children and adults still watch this film over 30 years later. Absolutely. Thank you once again to Philo Barkhart. You said it, Philo. You are so much Philo. Than Studio Philo. Yeah, thanks Philo. For me, man. Well, actually, I am. <laughs> <laughs> really? Is that how you say his name? I'm sorry. And this is all a shared hallucination. <laughs> a hallucination? You mean he's not there? Um. What are you doing? Now that's comedy. It looked like the background looked like someone from Alien. I don't know. <laughs> it's cystic fibrosis. Okay. okay. Uh, nothing else at the end. Uh, okay. Um, this is not the. Not only am I reacting to this, but what the heck? I am also gonna react to the bloopers. Because why not? You know. And I think, yeah, you read the title of this reaction, so you know. And besides, only two minutes of bloopers, so that doesn't hurt. All right, so without further ado, let's begin. <laughs> the tamarind, the head move. We should all have drawings of puppies. It's a trick. Remember, he hissed at us earlier. He kind of. He also kind of like said it too fast. I don't know. Forgot your line. see the uncensored <laughs> the, the the drawing uncensored <laughs> what were you saying Tamara Life size. 
the name. <laughs> yeah, that can happen sometimes. That, that, that what? <laughs> Line? Yeah. Or are they just... Yeah. Is, is he supposed to do that? Yeah. Well? <laughs> well? Okay, then. Is that it? Okay, apparently so. All right, it is. That's the end of the bloopers. Okay. Well, that th those were both really good. You know, the review itself and the bloopers. So... Well done. Well done, Doug Walker. All right. Enough said. Jump cut to my thoughts now. Hey, guys. So that was my reaction to the Nostalgia Critics review of the original Little Mermaid film. And in addition, reacting to the bloopers to the Critics review of the original Little Mermaid film. And yeah, again, as I said, both were good. Like, first off... Uh, on the bloopers, like, you know, anything that has bloopers, you know, they're always funny. So, you know, bloopers never disappoint, you know, whether if it's a movie or a show or if it's something that's on YouTube. You get my point. Um, and it's really cool that, um, you know, sometimes uh, for the Nostalgia Critic videos, like, you know, they would manage to get a guest star, like, you know... They've gotten some animators, like, most notably, Don Bluth. Like, Doug Walker managed to get Don Bluth, you know, appearing in two of his videos. One that had to do with uh, commercials, and the next one after that was the critic playing Dragon's Lair. And, you know, Don Bluth talking about fun facts about you know, his involvement with Dragon's Lair 1 and 2. Yeah, that's right, because uh, Nostalgia Critic played uh, both Dragon's, uh, Dragon's Lair games, um, the first one and the sequel. And I'm trying to remember, like, some of the other animators that he... I don't know, like, Don Bluth is the only, only one I can think of. I know that he got uh, Rob Paulson, Maurice LaMarche, in a video of his one time doing something pinky in the brain... <laughs> um, even, like, say, the composer of the Halo games, he appeared in another one of uh, Nostalgia Critic's videos, you know, of commercials, uh, because the the composer composed, like, the music of some Flintstones vitamin commercial. Yeah, that was a funny ongoing joke in that, and uh, the Stoucher Critic, like, has no idea who he is until he realizes that he has gone big with music, so. But about, yeah, the animator for The Little Mermaid and for The Secret of Nim, I did not know that, um, you know, got to appear in the review of The Little Mermaid, and of course, you know, um, talking about fun facts and facts that I didn't really know about, like, you know, Ariel being modeled after some uh, anime character, and um, there was also about um, the fact that him and Howard Ashman, they share the same birthday, and of course he brought up some facts that I already knew about, you know, um, what's-her-face, you know, being the live-action reference of Ariel, and it was funny, you know, inserting audio clips of Slappy Squirrel, and they work, you know, got it. of course he had to choose the right ones, you know, the right dialogue from Slappy to go along with some scenes with Ariel, um, and of course, you know, he brought up, uh, the fact, uh, 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 uh Jeffrey Katzenberg almost cut part of your world out of the film. Boy, I'm sure he, like, he would have almost regretted doing that, like, you know, because that's a memorable moment and, you know, part of your world being such an iconic, one of, one of the iconic Disney songs in general, you know? Um, and I, I did not know this, like, I, jeez, like, uh, some, like, some shots were, like, swapped, you know, at the end of the Part of Your World song. 
you know? And I can't remember. Like, I watched The Little Mermaid on Disney+. Plus. Did I notice that? Did they do that to the... Did they kept that and do that when it was out on Disney+. Plus? I don't know. I'll have to go back and check. And, you know, if you guys would want to let me know, let me know on that too in the comments section, feel free. Um, and it's true because, you know, The Little Mermaid being in an important piece of Disney animation, and animation in general, because, you know, boy, what would come next after this, you know? Disney would continue making history, you name it, for, you know, the Disney Renaissance, just... And what would come next in, like, the later years, you know? And since, you know, for one thing, um, Doug brought up uh, Frozen. That, too. Frozen making history, of course, for animation in general and Disney animation. Um, and some of the jokes in this review were funny, of course, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and, knowing, and you know Doug Walker, like, sometimes impersonating some of the characters oh yes and you know uh, doing king triton uh, i have um i have to do do something with one of my daughters you know dinner stuff like that um and uh, i'm trying to remember like uh oh yeah because uh doug doing eric like you know feasting on um the fish relatives that that joke at the end of, of the film that doug did um, and the Easter eggs, like, okay, like, I did not notice the one portrait that is supposed to resemble, uh, Philip and Aurora, yeah, and, um, yeah, and also Doug pointing out some things that how it should have ended did in their video of how the Little Mermaid should have ended, like, couldn't have Ariel, like, written her name in the sand? Well, Hizzy did something like that. A couple of things that Doug said. And by the way, uh, one more thing. I was surprised that he did not do a Gozer uh, joke slash reference. Like, that was easy to do, and he didn't do it. Did he forget that it that it is the same voice uh, of Gozer doing Flotsam and Jetsam? I don't know. But um, overall, this was a good review, and the... One of the animators they got, Fido. Is that how? Is that how his name is said? If I, if it's, if not, then I apologize. So yeah, yeah. But what about you guys? What did you think of the Nostalgia Critics review of the Little Mermaid itself? You know, and in addition, the bloopers. Like again, bloopers are always fun and hilarious. And what did you think of my reaction? Leave comments and give this reaction video a like, as always. So, with all that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction to the Nostalgia Critics review of the original Little Mermaid film, along with the bloopers to the review. More reaction videos coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash reaction. Take care and peace out.